Rachel Ziegler is back with the vengeance in a full cover story, cover page, and variety. The New York issue is out in oh my i've only seen the uh some of the headlines uh, some of the highlight highlighted uh quotes from her but we're gonna dive right into this just for you guys uh this literally came out less than two hours ago at uh recording time variety rachel ziegler on reinventing snow white and juliet facing off against toxic disney fans i've watched women quote unquote get torn down my whole life and here's a photo of rachel this is part of the new york issue they're calling it where she's the cover girl of it as well uh let's uh let's dive let's dive deep into it and let's go spoiler alert i die ziegler says you'll have to forgive the 23 year old actress for giving away the ending of her next project but to be fair it's been 400 years since a certain English woman wrote Englishman wrote the play in which she's making her Broadway debut. On October 24th, following a month of previews, Ziegler would take the stage as Juliet in director Sam Gold's revival of Shakespeare's best-known romance. Things are going to get intense for her and her Romeo, played by Heartstopper star Kit Connor. After all, the tagline for the production reads, The youth are effed. So, yeah, this sounds like uh, a huge promotion time for Ziegler and the Broadway production. I mean, this is uh, a huge Broadway debut. Uh, there's music involved. There's singing involved in this rendition of uh, Romeo and Juliet. So this is uh, the cover I was telling you about. In other words, you won't see them donning tunics or Elizabethan ruffs. Gold's vision leans heavily into the culture of Gen Z cast. Ziegler says he originally pitched the project to her as Romeo and Juliet as if it was Choye Siva's Rush music video. Ziegler offers her own take. Juliet would be having a brat girl summer. She says, joking that like Charlie XCX and Lord the Montagues and Capulets will work it out in the revival. Despite the 21st century's edge and the new music from pop super producer Jack Antonoff, Gold is sticking to the original text. It's 100 iamic pentameter, Ziegler says. This is Shakespeare, and you're sitting your ass down for a play. Since she's been plucked from her life as a high schooler in Hackensack, New Jersey, and handpicked by Steven Spielberg to play Maria in his 2021 remake of West Side Story, Ziegler's become one of the decade's shiniest stars. She's appeared in comic book adventures, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and headline major franchises, uh, and a headline a major franchise, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Now Ziegler is about to become an icon for kids the world over, playing the title role in Disney's live action Snow White, which opens in theaters March 2025. In some ways, playing the fairest of them all marks the end of an era for Ziegler. While, headline, while heading to Broadway marks the beginning of a new one. I need to start thinking about the pivot, she says. I feel capable of being picky for the next thing. Okay, interesting. Um, the way they're framing it, of course, listen, they're going to, they're going to, you know, play it up uh, and call her one of the, the decade's shiniest stars. I, I'm a big believe, I'm a big fan of her talent. I'm not a big fan of what uh, of how she is uh, uh, treated fans, treated the uh, treated the uh, the lore of Snow White from the past, and uh, some of her questionable political stances. But that being said, you know um, I am a fan of her talent. The thing is, though, West Side Story, Shazam, were all box office fa box office failures, and Hunger Games made a couple bucks. Mainly probably because it was a Hunger Games movie. So, shiniest stars? I think that is a, a term uh, used way too much. Jenna Ortega is a shiny, shiniest star of the, of the past decade. Absolutely 100%. So, yeah, but that's just me. Let's get back to this uh, big article, okay? But Ziegler's meteoric, meteoric rise comes with strings attached. 
For as long as she's been famous, she's been the subject of ruthless and relentless criticism. It all began innocently enough with petty jokes about her kid theater kid energy. But as Ziegler's fame increased, the complaints against her grew more sinister. When she playfully posted about not being invited to the 2002 Oscar, 2022 Oscars, despite West Side Story earning seven nominations, she was called ungrateful and entitled for demanding that she took the role in Shazam sequel because she needed the money. She was seen as tacky and in need of media training. And every time she speaks about racism and sexism in the entertainment industry, she slammed as just another DEI hire, coasting on her identity rather than her talent. She's trying to have a sense of humor about the vitriol. Someone should kill you, an ex-user wrote in August. Fun fact, I will be dying eight times a week on Broadway this fall, she replied, telling the hater to buy a ticket, then tagging the FBI. Being famous isn't for the faint of heart, Ziegler says with a sigh. When Ziegler comes down the stairs from her West Hollywood hotel room for breakfast, she's wearing a floral maxi dress with hair pulled up with an oversized claw clip to show off her a pair of gold hoop earrings. It's a sunny Saturday in August. There's no makeup in her face. So this was um, obviously before the intense rehearsals because I'm thinking, why is she in West Hollywood if she's getting ready to um, do a New York show? So uh, she's been in rehearsals for months, but this is obviously uh, some time off. Um, she blends well with the clientele brunches at tables nearby, but these are not her people. The reason I fell in love with this industry is not because of this town, she says, lowering her voice to evade the ears of the locals. In fact, I kind of can't stand this town. I don't like that there's a town built around the industry that I work in. It's stifling, isolating, and weird. In New York, nobody gives an F. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, okay, let, let's let's go back to the um, the beginnings of her of her of her being hated on 2022 um she was filming in the in the middle of filming uh snow white in the uk which is why she didn't get the immediate invite but then she uh kind of passively aggressively it was a passive aggressive comment where she's like didn't get not didn't get nominated didn't get invited but i'll be rooting for the nominations and then they they in invited her which people did call her entitled it is an entitled move because, you know, you're at work, stay working. A lot of actors whose movies are in it, I don't know what, because of scheduling, uh, they can't make it. That happens all the time. So that that was that's not a good move when you also think you got to halt production at least 48, 72 hours just for her to fly to New York and or fly to L.A. and fly back. Yeah, I. I would not have batted an eye. I would have kept on working and got my next project. Her take the money for Shazam. Hey, good on her. I have no problems with that. Um, I actually think the 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 anger or the hatred started when she got cast as Snow White. Um, two things happened. There was an automatic pushback because she wasn't white. She's she's half white. She's half half white, half Colombian. American kid, which I didn't like. I didn't like that at all. It didn't help that she said, I just got cast as Snow White. I'm not bleaching my skin. Listen, it's a joke. I get it. But people didn't find it funny on Twitter. It is what it is. And if you're playing, you're playing, you're playing with fire on social media, that's what's going to happen. I don't like, obviously, the death threats, all that, that all that is pure garbage. And uh, that, that, that is unfortunate. However, I think there's a way you can mitigate a lot of that. I thought she was doing that for a while when she, before Hunger Games, you saw her kind of take a take a break from social media. But she's back at it with uh, promoting Romeo and Juliet this time, which I think is a great move for her to uh, to do to do theater. She is a theater kid. She's a young theater kid. And that comes with pros and cons. Having been a theater kid myself, I know the type. I know the type um so she's a very talented lady young lady and uh but her putting down hollywood in los angeles it's you know yeah that doesn't sit well with me at all either i'm sorry man there there is an industry that has been built up 
that's run from the ground up all the way up to stars like you, where people are real regular people are working their butts off, keeping this business running, you know, from people that, that run the maintenance and hardware of studios, the truck drivers, the, the crew, the crews, the, the, just the hundreds and hundreds of people that comprise of this, uh, the running of this town, that's a pretty lazy and ignorant statement that she's made in regards to, uh, you know, I don't like these people F this town. <laughs> and look, you're, 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 you're cast, you're, you're, you're making these comments about your own, about your own industry. That is, uh, she's saying it's not the industry, it's the town. We'll see how that discernment continues here in this article. Wow. Ziegler's love for the five boroughs only redoubled after a six months shoot in the UK or Snow White following by filming the Hunger Games in Poland. It's not until you go around the world filming in different cities that you realize how grateful you are for the diversity of New York. She says, when I came back home from my year in Europe, going to my bodega where people speak in Spanish to me, she's performing her words, feigning heat stroke and rumbling with melodrama i was like oh my god i miss you enrique um i'm gonna continue she's giggly now and people really wear whatever the f they want if i go out and i'm like is this too fancy someone is definitely dressed more ridiculous than me in the best way she says she's wearing a curious accessory of her own today a sesame street fanny pack slung over one shoulder it's a nod to her ultimate career goal of becoming the sole human actor in a Muppets production. Michael Caine did it for Christmas Carol, she says. Tim Curry did it for Muppet, Muppet Treasure Island. I want to be that one. That will have to wait, though. For now, Ziegler's in her princess era. It's a mixed bag. Her appointment as the apple-eating stepdaughter of the evil queen drew instant ire online with many promising to boycott the film due to the woke casting. To them... The actress's Colombian heritage disqualifies her from playing the princess from Disney's 1937 musical fantasy. Described as having hair as black as ebony and skin as white as snow. Never mind the fact that character Blanca Neves is just as popular in Spanish-speaking countries as is in the U.S. She was my mom's favorite princess, Ziegler says. When she was growing up, there weren't a lot of dark-haired princesses, and that was the one she could relate to. It's no surprise that Snow White director Mark Webb wanted Ziegler from, for the role the moment she read for the part. She says, he says, his script supervisor wept upon hearing her singing voice. But all, but she also says her inherent grace of, her, her inherent, excuse me, but she also has an inherent grace. She also has an inherent grace, poise, and goodness that reminds me so much of what is essential to Snow White, he says. So, so Ziegler doesn't bother trying to understand why it's so hard for someone. Okay, let, let, let's stop for a second. Let's stop for a second here. Because as we have, uh, have um, uh, documented on the channel, um, it was down to her and Renata Vaca, a, an incredible actress, singer, singer actress from Mexico, who has a, a wonderful look to herself. So um, whether it was the goal of Mark Webb or not to do to do non-traditional casting, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with uh, with Ziegler or Renata uh, being Snow White. It's a, it's a fantasy. It's a musical. Uh, they look the part. They can sing. And there was ire. There was ire. People did not like that. And of course, you know. I, I, I'm always like, well, let's see it first. The problem is you're making uh, this, you're, you're creating this woke mountain that there's always going to be, people are always going to double down on both sides. And that's what this is, that this is happening here with this article. Let us continue. Ziegler. So Ziegler doesn't bother trying to understand why it's so hard for some of those diehard Disney adults to picture Latina in their beloved princess's shoes. She's making a children's movie after all. She remembers spending her own childhood obsessing over ABC's 1997 TV movie that starred Whitney Houston as the fairy godmother alongside 18-year-old Brandy as Cinderella. I grew up in a house where that was Cinderella. Obviously, we watched the cartoon. But 
a child's mind is the most amazing thing. We were just like, okay, that's Cinderella, she says. But the blonde hair, blue eyed, blue dress Cinderella from the 1950s cartoon is also Cinderella. Also, Hilary Duff is Cinderella in a Cinderella story. She smirks. I was able to comprehend those things at a young age. I know Rachel will be an absolutely incredible in this role, Brandy says. In an email, 26 years after her star turn in Cinderella, she's also got some advice for Ziegler as she faces the barrage of negativity over her casting. You're not taking on the role to fit the mold of the critics, she writes. You're doing this for every little Colombian girl who has yet to see themselves in a role like a Disney princess. You're doing this for the little girl that you once were, who grew up without that representation of her Colombian culture. You're showing her that anything is possible for someone who looks like her, and that is the most important job in the world. I absolutely 100% disagree. Um, this is Snow White, and if it, it's changed to where her roots are different, then it's, it's, it's a different iteration of Snow White. I am of the school of the merit of the actor and that person's talent, in this case, Ziegler, earned the role regardless of skin. And we should base it off her performance. Also, too, in regards to this whole thing of seeing ourselves and representation, it has become the calling call of this generation and to a ridiculous level. It's run to a ridiculous level. Because the, the truth is, we can see ourselves in everyone. Yes, it is absolutely nice to see someone with the same skin complexion, maybe perhaps depending on the character, the same uh, last name. That's cool. But that's not everything. I think, if anything, you don't want negative portrayals of you. So, listen. Ziegler, among white girls, uh, so many girls of different backgrounds, saw themselves in Brandy's Cinderella. So uh, this, this go around is just, it, it's, it is a, uh, it is an unfortunate talking point of the times. It's a, it's an absolutely, it, it, it lays the groundwork too, that if you don't like it, if you don't care for it, well, then you're automatically a racist or a sexist. Whereas like, Hey, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a fan of cinema or I'm a fan of Snow White. I don't like it. It didn't work for me. Um, of course, there's going to be those bigots. That's a different story. But if you're already telling people, um, hey, this is how you need to see it and this is why it's important, let them find out and discover for themselves. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's continue. Let's continue. As for the line about skin as white as snow, Ziegler reveals that the new film has its own origin story for her name. It fell back to another version of Snow White that was told in history, where she survived a snowstorm that occurred when she was a baby, she says. And so the king and queen decided to name her Snow White to remind her of her resilience. One of the core points of our film for any young woman or any young person is remembering how strong you actually are. Okay, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that iteration. It's not a stretch. Hey, you know, we discovered you in the snow. You 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 lived and all that stuff. We're gonna call you our little Snow White. Fantastic. Next, next. The social media outrage about Ziegler being cast as Snow White only got louder as time went on. She began saying in weird carpet interviews in the summer of 2022 that her version of the iconic princess wouldn't be spent her days pining over men. She calls the aspects of the original story weird and that the 1937 film, film's prince literally stalks Snow White. Overnight, online trolls took shots at Ziegler's disdain for the animated classic, deeming her unworthy to portray the OG Disney heroine. Well, uh, I mean, it was pretty snarky. It was pretty snarky uh, as far as how she, you know, just, you know, pasha the original. And how outdated she says it was. Again, again, it's it's all it's it's all about uh, perception and how you present the new work. Say, look, this is different from the original Snow White. We love the original Snow White. I love the original Snow White, but I think you're gonna love this one. Give it a shot. There's gonna be some different takes on it. 
uh lo- and, and we'd love to we, we would you know we would love for you to give it a chance even the og snow white fans if you if she had said that on the red carpet man people the the the, the biggest haters would have given her respect because they're like well hey okay she told us it's going to be different. She didn't diss us. All right. Because the OG fans of Disney and Snow White, those are the ones you want first. You want them celebrating your work first. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's continue. She grows somber, recalling the hate that erupted during the time. In all honesty, it made me sad that it was taken in such a way because I believe that women can do anything. But I also believe that they can do everything can do anything, but I also believe they can do everything, Ziegler says. What she meant to convey was that Snow White wants romance, but has other goals too. I would never want to box someone in and say, if you want love, then you can't work. Or if you want work, then you can't have a family. It's not true, and it's never been true. It can be very upsetting when things get taken out of context or jokes don't land, Ziegler says. The love story is very integral. A lot of people wrote that we weren't doing that storyline anymore, we were always doing that. It just wasn't what we were talking about on that day. No, Rachel. No, you actually said that you you guys pushed the love story. It's not that you weren't even talking about it that day, and you can roll tape. You said it on the red carpet that no, we don't need no Prince Charming, and uh, he's he's a weird stalker. He might be even cut off the editing floor, babe. It's Hollywood. Weird, weird. That whole thing. So it's all on you. It's all on you. And as far as online trolls, man, you know, again, they're they're only feeding off of what you're giving them. Absolutely f- incredible stuff here. Okay. Ziegler's not not surprised by what she sees as people people's willful misunderstanding of her comments. It's par for the course for an outspoken young woman in the public eye. I've watched women get torn down my whole life, my whole career, she says whole career her whole career is five years six years come on rachel come on and your whole your whole career i see nothing but women being awarded what are you talking about ariana debose got awarded for a performance that you were in in west side story no one was tearing her down they were cheering her on we'll watch it in the election that's coming up ah we get a now we go to the political we're going to witness that for a long time i fear sometimes it can feel like we're going back. It certainly felt that way when that was happening. So you made this thing a you made this thing of well, I'm an I'm outspoken. I'm a I'm a woman, and because I am in the public eye, it's now you're tearing me down. It can't be because you you even said the jokes didn't land. It's because people didn't find it funny. They didn't find you endearing. We've talked about this before on the channel. Ad finitum. Ad finitum. Okay. Ziegler isn't, isn't immune to the harsh criticism, even for bubbly demeanor. Makes her seem that way. Though she's been tempted to stay off social media, she won't. I don't like to give them the satisfaction of knowing they hurt me in the moment, she says. You give them a lot of power by taking a social media break. Logging off would also make it hard to speak up for the causes she cares about. During the SAG strike 2023, she championed protections against the potential dangers of artificial intelligence, a threat that, it felt, that felt personal. She's already doing something like 465 photos taken of every corner of my body for use in CG stunts. It was effing dystopian, she says. I was really scared of being replaced by an artificial intelligence versions of myself that they scanned when I was 18 and then never being able to work on that set again. What was stopping them from using that for the rest of my life? Um, Good points. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to argue that. And I uh, I actually uh, 100% back up any of those actors in regards to AI. Absolutely. You got to get that down. Uh, and that's that was a good point of the strike. Uh, so, yeah. Over the past year, Ziegler has been an advocate for the for the Palestinians, as expected. Her comments have been put under the microscope just one day after appearing at D23 in August, where Ziegler teed up the first footage from Snow White for a crowd of adoring fans. She posted a note of gratitude on X, but it was the last line of her post that drew the most attention. And always remember, free Palestine. Well, that's actually not true because she was saying, I'm off to go and uh, 
you know, work on Romeo and Juliet, you know, like I'll be away for a while. Oh, no, I always remember Free Palestine. So it was a very kind of uh, my take of it, not a completely sincere and definitely a, you know, a half hearted, you know, love you, babe. I always remember Free Palestine. It almost was like, are you, are you joking again? So, you know, yeah, man, this is, this is always the trick with uh, celebrities and mouthing off on their, on a, on a controversial uh, com uh, news items of the day. Rachel stirs more controversy, read Fox news headlines. Newsweek wrote that Ziegler was on a collision course with her co-star Gal Gadot who had served two years as a soldier in the Israeli Defense Forces before making it as an actress. I don't want to watch children die, Ziegler said. I don't think there should be a hot take. She knows it's not that simple, but she tries to tune out all the noise that blares out around her every time she speaks out. I'm only responsible for what I feel, am I? And, and then I'm only responsible for how I act upon it, she says. We now are in year one since the horrendous attacks on Israel on October 7th. I've been following this conflict for so many years, so it's like so many people, I'm so heartbroken over the loss of life that we're seeing with this insane death toll coming out of both regions. Despite the blowback, Ziegler wants to continue to use her platform to advocate for the Palestinian people. I don't have the answers, she says. I don't think any celebrity making a political statement has the answers. But we have the platform to share a donation link to make sure that people get the money, the care, and the aid that they need that people in power aren't giving them. If that means that they can fall upon us to be in power in a way that is helpful, then I am happy to. Okay, so before we move on and wrap up this stunning article, uh, I, I just want to say, uh, sign of the times a year later since the October 7th, uh, and this is a recorded date, October 2nd, uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the the Palestinian Israeli uh, uh, squirmish that started everything with all those horrendous deaths. It should be noted that <clears throat> Hollywood is now is openly <clears throat> giving celebrities more and more platform to speak about Palestine and Palestinians. A year ago, the only person who did it was Melissa Barrera. And what happened to her? She got fired. She got uh, she got uh, libeled uh, by Spyglass Media Entertainment, fired from screen, the whole thing. How little. How, how it's only a little time has passed, what one year, and how so much has changed. You know, what would be lovely if Rachel really cared about that and saying, Hey, I'm just using my platform. She used to speak up for Gina Carano, she used to speak up for Melissa Barrera. That, that, that would show me a, a, a bigger backup backbone than just say, Hey, remember, free Palestine. She also says something very interesting. She says, at the end of the day, I'm only responsible for my emotions and for how I, I, um, I, you know, basically for how I behave. And she is absolutely right. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all about how you behave and because you've chosen to be in the, in the public spot, because you don't have to choose that. Right. You see different celebrities bigger than you maneuver much differently than you, but you've chosen to, consistently engaged saying like oh they've won you know if I, they take me off social media you've chosen that because social media is a hellhole of mental instability so you got to know this so you got to take care of your mental state regardless this is why i've always advised her right in, in our videos go away from social media go act go sing go do broadway wonderful but you're engaging and you're only going to get, you're not going to get the best of Twitter. I'm just telling you, besides you having all your fans, and I hope I'm being constructive as possible because the Latino slant is a fan and we are pro, pro Ziegler, um, but we do call stuff out. All right, let's wrap this up. Wow. Ziegler is initially hesitant to accept the role on Broadway. She was worried she played Juliet would just feel like doing Maria again. And I didn't want to be boxed into that part for the rest of my time, she says. The Ziegler, the Spielberg film, Ziegler adds, has defined the, the past five years of her life. Thankfully so, she says. It's an amazing piece and it was an amazing job. But you're ready to move on at some point. Here she is moving on. 
photo of her, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Okay. There have been momentary departures from traditionally girly roles. Uh, the upcoming disaster comedy Y2K offered Ziegler the chance to flex the comedy chops and curse on film. While playing Laura, a teenage computer genius. I think that's already been out. It's come and gone. Maybe it's streaming. In Hunger Games, Lucy was a romantic lead with a beautiful voice. The character fights for the life for her life with an attitude as iron-fisted and a little bit terrifying. I liked her in that. I liked her in that, guys. And I liked the film. Even though she's still in her early years in her career, very early, Ziegler has tried to fight against being typecast. I feel like nobody wanted me to do anything, she says. Even the Broadway offer that I was getting, like, do you want to be Guinevere and Camelot? There's a lot of interest there, but it would be another soprano. The, the thing that everyone's already seen me do. It would have to be an honor. It would have been an honor, but I think about the longevity of her career. Good for her, man. She's 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 taking choices. She's making risks. Uh, she's made she's taking risks, making choices. Sorry, guys. Ziegler says she's locked into the character Julia for the first time after Gold instructor to keep in mind that 13-year-olds are way older than they used to be, she says. That was life-changing for me to hear. I remember what it was like being 13 and I was smarter than my parents. And thinking I was smarter than my parents, my brain moving faster than my mouth could ever. Well, <laughs> I think that's still going on, Ziegler. <laughs> Love you, girl, but just saying. And Ziegler wasn't interested in brushing up on the bard when she took on the role. She admits having an ulterior motive. It keeps me in New York, she says. I love an excuse to be home. Wasn't just, a, yeah, okay. Hey, I respect that as well. And it, it is a huge huge uh privilege to be able to work at home because you know people lo love work and traveling you know Romy loves to take jobs uh, out of state but there's something to be said about going to the studio and coming back home in the same day all right these days home is apartment lower east side shared with a miniature golden doodle named lenny in honor of legendary west side story composer leonard bernstein her second love is her boyfriend and West Side Story Hunger Games co-star Josh Andres Rivera. After brunch, she'll fly back to New York to see them both. A much-needed support system before she begins Romeo and Juliet rehearsals in two days. I have the same panic attack the night before I start anything. I just want to be good. I just want to be enough. And I just want it to be, want it to be right for it. And I want to be right for it. As for a personal life, she abides by a more traditional definition of happily ever after. Which might come as a surprise for those who interpret her comments about Snow White. Not needing a prince as man-hating. Honestly, my goal is to get married, have kids, retreat at some point, and get to do the thing where I come out every couple of years and make something I have and have it hopefully be really special and celebrate it, then go back. Ziegler finds marriage and motherhood to be compatible with her feminist agenda. The idea of her private, her own private fairy tale is what keeps her feet on the ground. What I've learned is if I learned anything in the past couple of years is that the love I have in my life is way more important than any accolade. That's what's kept me from, Ziegler surprises herself. Tears spring forward. Sorry, she whispers. She swallows, then it speaks through it. It's what keep me from doing anything stupid. Hmm. It's what's kept me from doing anything stupid. Interesting. Like giving up on all of this, this abundant creative life she always dreamt of for good. There have been times where I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. My mere existence has served as an education for people that don't have basic sense of empathy. And that can really make you want to disappear. Ziegler porks a fork the small bowl of fruit in front of her, but her mind is on the East Coast. She pictures a house she'll buy one day back in Jersey or in upstate New York with a yard for Lenny to run around in before looking back up. My family raised me just to be grateful for the quiet, she says. I look forward to the quiet. These are moments where I feel most myself. Um, okay. Well, that is the whole article. Stunning piece. Way to end it. I uh I think that's fantastic that those are the things that she wants. I think as she's get gets older in regards to uh, uh balancing uh a real home life, marriage, children, and then so-called feminist agenda, she will find a measured way to uh to uh you know work and to advocate for her causes i think uh, at the end of the day and what i always say with with a lot of these 
new artists with these new actors, new projects. Let your work speak for itself. Let your work speak for you. And if you want to donate, if you want to, you know, be a part of something, you want to, you know, you have, you have a cause for a couple of years, do it anonymously. Do it anonymously. There's people who you'd be very surprised and who you would even think to be your political enemy that have anonymously for years been very giving to people. So, um, uh, yeah, listen, some people are not going to like uh, this uh, this this long article for for no matter what. Um, I, there are some things here that I that I that I really liked. I really liked that ending. Uh, again, I agree with with her and how she maneuvers as an in regards to her business. You know, hey, did this project for money? Good for you. Hey, um, you um, <clears throat> uh, I want to branch out. I don't want to be typecast. All that stuff. I am one hundred percent for it, and I think she is a uh, huge talent. I just think, uh, you know. She needs to learn a little bit from herself. And it, it shouldn't be so much about uh, me versus them. Just, she says something very, very special. It's about how I behave. Choose your words wisely. All right, let me know what you guys think. This has been a great uh, video here on the Latino Slant. Make sure you are subscribed. I'll catch you later. Wherever you're at, keep your slant fuerte. Gracias.